Vamos a probar sonido, sí, vamos a probar sonido. Cuando un pueblo alaba a Dios, suceden cosas, suceden cosas maravillosas. Cuando un pueblo alaba a Dios, suceden cosas, suceden cosas maravillosas. Hay sanación, liberación, se siente el poder de Dios. Hay sanación, liberación, se siente el poder de Dios. Aquí se siente la presencia de Dios. Aquí se siente la presencia de Dios. Siento el fuego del Espíritu Santo, siento el fuego del Espíritu Santo, siento gozo, siento paz, siento el amor que mi Dios me da, siento gozo, siento paz, siento el amor que mi Dios me da, aquí se siente, sí, señor, aquí la se siente. Aquí se siente la presencia de Dios Cuando un pueblo alaba a Dios Suceden cosas, suceden cosas maravillosas Cuando un pueblo alaba a Dios Suceden cosas, suceden cosas maravillosas Hay sanación At this time, we will brief you on the agenda, ground rules, and housekeeping. We ask all cell phones are on silence. A group of COPS Metro leaders have set the agenda that all of you should have a copy. COPS Metro leaders, and members, if you approve this agenda, 
Please wave it in the air. Are we ready for this celebration? Yes! Now for the ground rules. There is an accountability portion of our agenda where we ask elected officials for a commitment to our very, very, very important agenda items and all they need to say is yes or no. We respectfully ask that you do not boo it for any official who does not support our agenda or answers unfavorably to our questions or is wishy-washy in their answers to our agenda. And to the candidates running for election that are here today, you are here to learn. Do not pass out any of your campaign literature because we, COPS Metro, is a nonpartisan organization. We would like to thank NoCast for live streaming the event today and they are not charging, it's free. <laughs> Hospitality items, the restrooms and water fountain are located at the entrance of the building to the right. Si necesita la traducción, por favor, tome el equipo en la entrada del salón. The action will begin in a few minutes. Please turn to the back of your agenda for the opening song, El Corrido de Cops, and join the choir. Thank you. se puede no ocultar quien paga las consecuencias es el pobre que ni habla un aplauso acá pero nació en San Antonio un grupo llamado Gaps a quien Dios los ha mandado por la a luchar ya todos los poderosos han comenzado a temblar ya no se burlan como antes ya reconocen acá ellos creían que porque eran gente el pueblo no más podían intimidarlos para que dejaran de hablar pero nació en San Antonio un grupo llamado Cas a quien Dios nos ha mandado por la a luchar los ricos solo confían en el dinero su Dios y con su esperanza en el verdadero Dios el amor y la unidad deben faltar porque la unión es la fuerza que nos ayuda a triunfar pero nació en San Antonio un grupo llamado Cas a quien Dios 
se a luchar. Arriba, arriba, hermanos, vamos a casa apoyar. Si quieren ver en la vida a sus hijos progresar. Aquí yo ya me despido, vamos juntos a luchar. Padre Alberto Benavides, Beatriz Gallegos y Pero nació en San Antonio un grupo llamado por la justicia a luchar a quien Dios nos ha mandado por la justicia a luchar I am Maria Tijerina from Our Lady of Guadalupe, Church on the West Side. And I'm Reverend Josh Snyder, minister at First Unitarian Universalist Church. We're your co-chairs for this event. The meeting will now get started. We will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, Sister Graviela Lohan from the Sisters of the Holy Spirit and Ms. Janie Martinez from St. Bonaventure will lead us in prayer. You all may sit down. Alabaré, 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 alabaré a mi Señor, alabaré, 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 alabaré a mi Señor. Viva Capsi Metro, viva! We thank you, God, because much has changed in San Antonio in 42 years. Credit Cops communities organized for public service. For changes that made our lives better. Amen. Built up dilapidated neighborhoods. Built libraries. Founded Palo Alto College. Affordable housing was built. Amen. Amen. Project Quest is educating thousands of people. The Education Partnership is sending thousands of young students to college. Amen. Amen. We understand politics. Amen. We ask, we ask you God to help us in the next 40 years. Cops and Metro will develop new strategies. To engage new allies. Train new leaders. Build up new institutions. Amen. Amen. Mosques, synagogues, people of all faith. People Pe of no faith. People of goodwill. Amen. Amen. Demand economic security for workers. Workers in all 16 school districts. In public hospitals in all public institutions. Amen. Raise our funding base and pay our dues. Amen. 
hire 25 new creative organizers. Train them in our cups and metro ethic. Amen. Amen. We will raise two and a half million dollars to do all of this. And we start will start today. today. Amen. My name is Natalia Tovar, and I am a leader with St. Timothy Cops Metro. We welcome everyone to our great celebration, Cops Metro's 40th anniversary. Cops Metro members, let us know who you are. Please stand and remain standing when your institution is called. Buenas tardes. Yo soy Linda Ortega, del Sagrado Corazón y líder de Cops Metro. Les, da, les damos la bienvenida a todos a esta gran celebración de 40 años de Cops Metro. Instituciones, cuando Cops Metro se, les llame que son y pónganse de pie. St. Timothy Catholic Church. <laughs> Sisters of Divine Providence. Sisters of the Holy Spirit, First Unitarian Universalist, Bocas, St. Alfonso's, Project Quest, Holy Redeemer, St. Leo's Catholic Church, Our Lady of Guadalupe Westside, Texas IAF and Gas. San Juan de los Lagos, St. Bonaventure Catholic Church, St. Leonard's Catholic Church, St. Antonio Alliance, Christ the King Catholic Church, St. Philip of Jesus Catholic Church, Bear County Federation Teachers University Baptist, St. Francis of Assisi, Our Lady of Guadalupe Halotis, Pax Christi, our Lady of the Lake University, MacArthur Lutheran, Our Lady of Sorrows, St. Clair Catholic Church, Travis Park, St. Henry's Catholic Church, St. Anthony the Powder Catholic Church, Sagrado Corazón, United Presbyterian. Is there any institution that has not been called? Please say the name of your institution. Say it loud so we know you're here. Welcome, everybody. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Is everybody awake now? <laughs> Bienvenidos todos. Welcome, history makers. Yeah, come on. We are here today to celebrate and reflect on our legacy, to honor our leaders, and conduct business to expand our living wage and economic security campaign. Reverend Snyder. Just want to say before I begin that we have uh, uh, three resolutions that have been shared with us. One from Senator Jose Menendez, one from the State House, Justin Rodriguez, and one from the city, Shirley Gonzalez. So thank you all for those resolutions. I won't read them all, they take a little too long. What a wonderful occasion. 40 years is a long time for any institution to be successful. Now, I'm new to San Antonio. I had moved here just last summer, but immediately I could tell that Cups Metro was a vibrant and relevant force to be reckoned with in our community. When I first joined an organization much like Cups in one of my previous ministries, the organizer told me something that stuck with me 
for a long, long time now. He said, tradition is the living ideas of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead ideas of the living. Traditionalism is a kind of sentimentalism. It's remembering the past for its own sake, because we wish for those better days that they were still here. It's, it's kind of an escapism from reality, from the here and now. But tradition is remembering the past so that it can be alive for us in the present. A living tradition sees its past as a source of inspiration and ideas. The past inspires us today and leads to action. This is certainly, the, certainly true for the story of the Exodus. The ancient Israelites found themselves the subject of uh, oppression and humiliation at the hands of the Pharaoh. Till finally, Moses comes along. And he's a leader, he's got some vision, he's got some imagination, he has a sense of purpose and calling. Born an Israelite, but raised as an Egyptian, so he's got a foot in both these worlds. And, and because of that, he's got some legitimacy with both groups. And Moses helps the Israelites to understand that God has a larger vision for them than just oppression. God's vision is liberation. Always liberation. Now, I won't go into the details of all of Exodus. Hopefully you've read that book. If not, you saw the movie. <laughs> but this story of following a divine call that leads to liberation and new life has been a story that has inspired countless people. It inspired Jews who were in diaspora. It inspired Christians in the Roman Empire. It's inspired civil rights activists in our own time. <clears throat> All of them having seen a reflection of themselves in that story. All of them feeling connected to it and the energy of it inspires them. That's what good stories do. Good stories are not just stories of the past. They get us excited about today. They get us excited about where we are now and where we could be headed moving forward. And that's what we are about today because the story of Cops Metro is a living tradition. So what are we here to do today? Well, we're going to tell the story of 40 years of Cops Metro, but we aren't just here for traditionalism. This story is not the dead ideas of the living. We're here to remember this story, and, and as you hear it, I want you to do three things. I want you to feel something, I want you to think about something, and I want you to do something. So we're going to hear stories from speakers who are going to share their stories with us, stories of struggle, of political victory. I want you to let those stories into your heart. And if you feel inspired, great. If you feel angry, great. May those feelings motivate us and keep us keeping on. But passion and emotion by themselves aren't enough, you see. Power is passion with a plan. So I want you to think about some things too. I want you to be open to new ideas and new perspectives on the organizing work that COPS Metro has done over these years. Let your mind be open to new learning. And lastly, it isn't tradition, it isn't the living ideas of the dead if we don't go out and do something. Our time together can't just be a nice story to tell or to listen to. It has to motivate us and inspire us to action today and tomorrow. So stick around toward the end of our time when we'll be able to lay out the next steps and action items. My friends, 40 years is a huge accomplishment. We're grateful for those history makers who've lived through the formative years of COPS Metro and have kept it alive so well ever since. We're blessed to have many of those leaders in our institutions and in our midst today. May the next 40 years be a story worth telling and retelling for generations to come. Amen. Blessed be. As we were preparing for this action uh, over the last year, we heard many stories about our numerous leaders, some that I had never heard about and, uh, or knew, and a lot of them that I knew myself. These names are our history makers. These are our people. We read and we heard stories about their struggles and their amazing achievements. And as we talked about their work and what really stood out was that many leaders have been making histories in our institutions. 
just ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Some of those leaders are here today and have been with us from the beginning. We would like to honor and recognize Father Michael DeGeronomy for his work with us for the past 40 years. <laughs> Father Walter De Eating, who has been developing strong leaders in his parish. That's the noisy Sacred Heart crowd. <laughs> and where is she? Sister Gabriela Lowen. <laughs> who's worked tirelessly on the East Side as an advocate for Project Quest. We would also like to recognize founding leaders and past co-chairs that are with us today like Mr. Andy Saravia, Ms. B. Gallego over here in the front, Ms. Beatriz Cortez, are you here with us? Ms. Virginia Ramirez, Rachel Salazar, Elisa Aguilar, yeah. Rowena Rogers, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Mike Landeros, yeah. Gay Guerra, yeah. and Sister Joe Murray. Also with us today is Mr. Pascual Segovia and Alma Alvarado. Thank you for being here. Some of our leaders are not able to attend, like Father Edmundo Rodriguez from Our Lady of Guadalupe. And others have passed away. Just in the last two years, we have lost leaders like Ms. Marcia Welch from Holy Redeemer, Amelia Coronado from San Alfonso, Ms. Cruz Sellers and Mr. Atanasio Garcia from Our Lady of Guadalupe, and Mr. and Mrs. Sierra of St. Henry's. We would also like to honor Father Alberto Benavides, who passed away who passed away on May 1st, so tomorrow is his 30th anniversary. Mm. When we were signing up individuals at our parish at Our Lady of Guadalupe, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the other leaders had the same experience, we had a lot of folks come up to us and tell us stories about their parents that were involved in cops, children remembering how they were taken to different events, either at the city hall or one of the stores downtown. So I'm only saying that there are just many, in fact too many individuals for us to be able to call out their names at this time. We probably don't have all of them but they deserve to be honored and named. So I feel that it's our collective responsibility to identify those leaders that made a difference in our communities and to remember and tell their stories. Help us write our history. You are giving cards when you register. Take the time to write down the names of those leaders that you know and remember, for they are our history makers. At this time, I'd like to introduce the first president of COPS, Mr. Andre Sarabia.
Thank you. Thank you. Will those who attended the first COPS convention in 1974 please stand? That was a few. With all, with all past and present, COPS and Metro Alliance leaders, organizers, clergy, and religious, please stand. Come on, I know there's, you're in here. Okay. Will the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of past and present leaders please stand? You, you are the history makers we honor today. Look around at our sister organizations. Little did we know when we created COPS, we would become the inspiration and model for organizations throughout Texas, around the country, England, Germany, Australia, and Canada. Today, we pass on the baton of leadership to all you organizations and you COPS children. You are the proud legacy of COPS. You are the next generation of leaders. Be true to the philosophy and the fundamentals that brought change to COPS communities. Fundamentals that changed the political culture of San Antonio. Dedicate yourselves to your one-on-one -on -one conversations, house meetings, listen to the needs of your community, do your research, develop your agendas of common interests. But it is not enough to just have organized people. To have real power, you have to have organized money. So, pay your dues. <laughs> Own your organizations. Raise your budgets. Pay your dues. <laughs> Most importantly, we must get out the vote. Without the vote, we lose everything we have worked for. In San Antonio, we have two great marches commemorating the lives of Cesar Chavez and Dr. Martin Luther King. But we must remember that marches and conventions like this are only symbols of our unity. But getting out the vote in an organized, strategic way is a symbol of our strength and of our power. As you go forth into your into action, working for the future of your families and your communities, think of cops. Tell yourselves, cops did it, we will too. El pueblo, el pueblo unido. Nunca será vencido. Si se puede. Good luck and God bless. We will now begin the living wage and economic security portion of our agenda. Mr. Cruz. My name is Robert Cruz, <clears throat> a member of St. Leo the Great, and a, and a leader of Cops and Metro. <laughs> Our campaign for economic security and living wages evolved from the stories we heard of struggling families, individuals trying to make ends meet. 
and often working two and three jobs and still having to depend on subsidies. They called us a low-wage town, but cops and Metro said no. We want the city to respect and invest in work development. This has been our battle from the beginning and continuing today. We have organized for higher wages before and spearheaded programs like Project Quest and Palo Alto College to train and educate our workforce. And over the last two years, we have won. Now our public sector employees in county, hospital, college district, and city employees are earning a wage of $13 an hour. Contract or outsourced workers have also seen an increase. And the San Antonio Independent School, School District leads the way in giving a living wage to their lowest paid workers. And we are not finished. We will continue this campaign until our city is no longer marketed for low wages, but is known for its trained and educated workforce. We will now present some of our current stories to understand the struggles of our families are facing today. Good afternoon, my name is Azanat de la Fuente. I'm a member of Our Lady of Mar Carmel Catholic Church and Bocas which is the newest member of COPS Metro. I have lived in the Hyde and Oak subdivision for 15 years. It's a community in the far south side of Bear County, outside city limits that has no paved streets or sidewalks, no lighting or street signs. The roads are so bad that school buses don't go in. We just lost trash collection services due to the vehicles getting stuck in the sand. Two months ago, my six-year-old daughter was making hot cocoa at home she received second degree burns to her abdomen and right thigh. I quickly realized her injuries were serious, so I dialed 911. As I was trying to help my daughter who was screaming and shaking in pain, the dispatcher was on the phone with me, asking me what my street looked like, what was my cross street, what was near my house, and asked me if someone can stand outside my house to flag the emergency vehicle responders who were lost. I'm a nurse for University Health System, so I know that ambulances are expected to arrive in less than nine minutes after they are dispatched. In my daughter's case, it took a little over 25 minutes. And why? Because things have not changed in Highland Oaks in the last 15 years. 15 years is enough. We have had enough. With COPS, with COPS Metro, we have gotten organized. Last month, the county approved a plan to invest $4.4 in over for two years to pave all of the streets in Highland Oaks and to, fix, and to fix this public safety threats. We won't let up until this plan is included in the budget and our streets are paved. With COPS Metro, we are going to win this. At this moment, we have to switch around our, our uh, schedule a little bit. So I'm having uh, Ms. Perry Radel just uh, make a few comments about the living wage in the San Antonio Independent School District. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you to the graciousness of COPS who understands my oldest daughter is having a baby, and we have a baby shower in just a few minutes, so thank you. But. Uh, most importantly, uh, we are grateful to be with you to celebrate this 40 years 
and to affirm for you that our district has already in its budget approved for next year a raise in the minimum wage and we are up to twelve dollars And we are grateful for the voice that you joined with us in making this known to the public how important it is to raise the raises, the, the, the pay of our lowest paid employees and to think that we were able to raise it 20% because of the involvement of ourselves with you. It's a tremendous and we thank you for that. We, we further want to say that we are not finished this traveling together on the minimum wage. So we will be with you in the future to raise it to 13. We like to get it up to 15. We will travel together, together. We need your help on this. So let's do that together. And we thank you. Thank you for organizing. Thank you for organizing the love and the passion in the San Antonio community and bringing social justice to the forefront. Thank you so very much from SAISD. Thank you, Ms. Radel. We'll now go back, okay? We were telling stories. We will go back to those stories and then come back to this portion of the agenda. I am Chris Amandares, a graduate of Brackenridge High School and a parishioner of Sacred Heart Church. My mom is a superstar. She gets up at 6 in the morning to go to her first job as a cafeteria worker with the school district. Then, at 4 o'clock, I pick her up from her second for her first job to head to her second job at the sports complex, also with SAISD. And sometimes she doesn't even get out until 9 or 10 p.m. at night. The only time I ever see my mom is the 15 minutes in between transition of jobs. And this is all because we had to provide for our family and make it worry free. And there's my dad. He works a 9 to 10 hour shift job. A day, so I hardly see him either. I finished high school and I got accepted into college, but I had to drop out to help support my family in that need. I'm 19 years old and can work and drive and provide for myself in a way, but what gets me angry, what gets me really angry is to think of other children who are growing up without their mom or dad who don't have support in doing homework, studying, and even making a meal. That makes me angry. Doesn't that to y'all? Yes. 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 SCISD school trustees, are you going to work with us to increase those wages and bring those parents home? Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Pedro Bueno. Pertenezco al Escarado Corazón. Soy líder de Metro Caps. Tengo nueve años trabajando en la misma compañía. Trabajo yo y trabaja mi esposa. Pero no nos alcanza para nuestros pagos. He tenido que recurrir a las agencias financieras para despeñar mi título de mi troca para poder recuperar ese título, necesito pagar dos o tres veces más de lo que me han prestado por mi título. En CAS Metro me han enseñado a que yo tengo poder y ustedes también tienen poder para combatir. Para combatir estos sueldos injustos y estas financieras. Pónganse de pie las personas que han estado en una situación igual como la mía o lo están pasando. Déjenme decirles que no están solos. 
Con Cas Metro tenemos el poder de luchar y combatir los sueldos injustos y estas financieras depredadoras. ¿Quién dice amén? ¡Amén! ¡Amén! Mr. Bueno is saying, my name is Pedro Bueno from Sacred Heart Church and a Cos Metro leader. I have worked eight, nine years with the same company. I work and my wife also works. And what we earn is not enough to pay our bills. That is why at times I've had to hawk my truck's title. But to recuperate my title, I have had to pay two or three times more money than was loaned to me. Is that fair? Yes, yes. Cobbs Metro has taught me that I have power, and when we organize, we have more power to combat these companies that pay unjust salaries and these predatory finance companies. So he asked us, stand up, all of you that are in the same situation. Let me tell you, you are not alone. With Cobbs Metro, we will win. Amen. He's got to. He's got to go first. Sorry. And now to share with us the challenge before us, Father Brian Christopher of Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. Good afternoon. We want to begin by thanking our elected officials for hearing stories like this and responding with compassion and justice, amen? amen? But let's get something straight. With due respect, they're not doing us any favors. They're doing their job. When our elected officials guarantee our God-given rights, they're not doing something over and above their job descriptions. They're following their job descriptions. And God knows we need more of our elected officials here living their job description, doing their job, amen? Yeah. So I need you to do me a favor. Sisters and brothers, if you know anybody, if you know any parents who work more than one job and still worry about putting food on the table for their kids, stand up. On your feet, stay standing, stay standing. If you know any young people like Chris here who has had to leave school, drop out of school in order to provide for his family, stand up. If you're here because you want to support these, your sisters and brothers, stand up. That's why we're here today, sisters and brothers. Stay standing. Stay standing. You know, I hear a lot of people say that we church folk ought to leave economics aside, that we ought to stay out of politics, that we ought to stick with religion. Well, guess what? This is religion. If you want me to believe that I am a child of God, if you want these friends of ours to believe that they are children of God, then give them work that will pay enough to support their families. My friends, a living wage is not something extra. A living wage is not an entitlement. A living wage is a right. And we don't gather here today to beg our elected officials for that right. We are here today to demand that right in the name of God and in the name of justice. For 40 years, Cops Metro has been doing an excellent job of demanding this justice. But friends, we got a lot more work to do. So let's keep the pressure on. Thank you, Father Brian. Before we go to the business of our, our, our public business, we have a delegation from Christ the King that we probably failed to recognize. Uh, will you all stand up and cheer? Christ the King! We will now begin the public business of raising wages in Bear County. Ms. Hernandez. Good afternoon. 
I'm Cecilia Hernandez from Sacred Heart Church and leader with Caps Metro. SISD Superintendent Martinez and trustees, we congratulate you for being the first school district to raise the, the entry level wages in San Antonio for, from 10 to $12 an hour. Congratulations. Mr. Martinez and trustees, we have two questions for you. Will you make sure the compensation plan approved is adopted in the budget? Absolutely. Yes, of course. Yes. Thank you. The second question is, will you commit to work with us to raise wages to $13 an hour for the, following we, for the following year? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for working with us. City Council. City Council. And now to, and now to discuss uh, uh, with our county commissioners, Ms. Esmeralda Rodriguez from St. Timothy. Oh, Elizondo. yeah. Good afternoon. I'm Esmeralda Rodriguez, leader of St. Timothy's Cops Metro. <laughs> Commissioners Calvert and Elizondo, with your support, Bear County was the first local government to publicly support and approve a budget for Cops Metro's living wage campaign. This included raising the entry level wage from $11.50 to $13 an hour for direct county employees on year one, and setting a minimum for all contracts with the county, which means that contract workers' wages went from $7.25 to $9 an hour as a result. Congratulations. You also approved the recommendation by Public Works to address the public safety risk of unpaved roads, prioritizing Highland Oaks. The stories, the stories we've heard remind us that we still have a lot of work in the county. We have two questions for you as we look ahead at next year's budget. Will you continue to support the Living Wage Initiative, raising the entry level wages to $14 an hour for next fiscal year? And will you ensure that the Public Works recommendation to prioritize Highland Oaks investing $2.5 million this coming fiscal year to begin paving their roads is fully funded? Commissioner Calvert will start with you. Glad OKC, okay, yes. Is, would you like to make a remark, uh, Commissioner Calvert? Well, I've been honored to work uh, alongside Commissioner Rodriguez on, uh, and Commissioner uh, Elizondo on getting the budget to get this done. Uh, in my opinion, uh, as a member of the MPO, Metropolitan Plans It organization, we gave some $500 million to help with 281 and the congestion in the north side. I don't see why the south side shouldn't get the same Wonderful. thing. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Elizondo. Commissioner Elizondo. Yes. <laughs> You're next. <laughs> well, I always tell cops yes. <laughs> And si se puede. You know, it was earlier, I was with, I've been with the cops from the beginning. Andy Saravia just reminded me that when they had the organ, organizi, organizing uh, dance and, and music for the first cops rally, I, my band played for it. And, uh, <laughs> and as, your, as your commissioner all these years, 
since 1982. I'm honored to work with you. I've worked with you on Project Quest. I will continue to work for this. And sooner or later, um, it looks like we are going to be competing with California to get to that $15 an hour figure. But we're not there yet, but please don't get after me if we take a little time. Uh, we will work this year towards that $14 figure. Wonderful. Thank you. Next, the city council, council person, Ms. Lopez. Council members, you supported COPS Metro living wage campaign and stood strong all the way through the budget process raising wages for the lowest paid city employees from $11.50 to $13 an hour, effective January 2016. Congratulations. <laughs> Councilwoman Gonzalez, you know we must do better on wages. A full-time city employee should be able to provide for a family so our campaign calls for re reaching a living, living wage of $15 an hour for 2018. Also, many people work for the city through contracts as outsourced workers. They get paid the minimum wage and have no benefits, but they are still public servants. In response to our campaign, Bear County commissioners set a wage requirement for contract workers of no less than $9.50 an hour Two questions. Will you lead the council in raising wages to $14 an hour in the city budget for the 2017 year? And will you support establishing a wage requirement of $9.50 an hour for future city contracts? Yes, I will, with very much pride. I'm proud to do so. Thank you. That was a yes. <laughs> Councilwoman Villagran, your response, please. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Trevino, your response. Yes and yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Mr. Newberg, your response. Yes, and on that second point, it should have been done a long time ago. Thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman. Gonzalez, raising wages is just part of our strategy, helping people gain the skills needed for new careers with family wages and opportunities for growth is an important piece. And Project Quest continues to do just that through long-term job training. The city invests in this strategy is a good one, but it is important that this funding is at least as consistent as Project Quest. Uh, return on investments. Will you support Project Quest as a separate line item on the city budget to stabilize its funding? It's a project that's very dear to my heart. Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Councilwoman Villagran. Yes, it's very important and with Father Frank Macias there from St. Leo's, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Newberg. Mr. Newberg. Yes. Thank you. And Councilman Trevino. Yes, absolutely. And now to speak to our state representatives, Mr. Ian Chase from First Unitarian Universalist. Good afternoon, Representative Rodriguez. I, I'm Ian Louder. Chase with COPS Metro at, and First Unitarian Universalist. As I'm sure you're aware, cities and, and, and locales have been passing laws uh, such as um, clamping down on uh, payday lending and raising minimum wages. And I wanted to know if you would commit to fight bills that would remove the jurisdiction of cities over things like, such as this. 
First of all, great question, and absolutely, I've not just uh, committed today to fight for those bill against those bills, but I also have in the past fought against them. You all know last session HB 40 was a bill to usurp the city of Denton's authority, the city council to ban fracking. I voted against that, and I'm certainly fully committed to continue that. And will you also commit to help fight or to fight for the, to keep the ACE jobs fund funded at the current level or or higher? That's a, the adult education program. Absolutely, I'll commit to making sure. First of all, if we can, we increase that funding. I know it's going to be hard this session, but I know Mike was up there last session, and we worked with uh, State Rep Villarreal and Senator Vandepute to get that funding in. We'll continue to do that. And a quick shout out to my friend former state rep and congressman Pete Gallego. I see Pete here, who's also been a champion and fighter. Thank you. My name is Gloria Mora, and I'm a member of St. Leo, the great Catholic Church Cops Metro. And I also live in the Harlandale Independent School District. I'm a taxpayer and resident, and our delegation is working along with not just St. Leo's, but other members of the other parishes in our district to ensure that Harlandale follows the lead of SAISD in bringing the living wage to the lowest paid employees. My name is Paul Zeiss. I'm a leader at MacArthur Park Lutheran Church in the Northeast Independent School District. We're going to be working through the San Antonio Sponsoring Committee and others to make sure that Northeast matches what San Antonio did with its lowest wage employees. Hello, Cops Metro. I'm Father Mike DiGirolami from St. Timothy Church, Cops Metro. All right. Six months ago, Pope Francis told the U.S. Congress, you are called to defend and preserve the dignity of your fellow citizens in the timeless and demanding pursuit of the common good, for this is the chief aim of all politics. That's right. That's right. He's saying the truth. Now, this world-renowned spiritual leader is giving Cops Metro his blessing to continue our work to make our communities a better place to raise our families. What do you think? Yeah. Now, COPS Metro leaders, we've heard and seen stories and commitments from our public officials. Now it's up to us to be real leaders in our communities to make sure that we move forward into our next 40 years. Are you willing to do that? We have a little homework to do. Remember when you came in, you received a little card, a little sheet of paper. I hope you have it. If you didn't get it, you can fill it out when you, as you leave. Please take this card in hand, and hopefully you have a pencil or a pen. Step one will take place at the next regular leaders meeting on Monday, May 9th at Sacred Heart Parish Hall. Anyone who has an interest in becoming more involved should place a check mark on that card. Step two, we'll be organizing 101, how to build relationships, back to the basics. This will be held on Saturday, May 21st at 9 a.m. at Our Lady of Guadalupe Parish Hall. Step three, to continue collaboration between COPS Metro and Catholic Charities around the issue of predatory lending and economic security, living wages. That's what we want. We will teach 100 leaders to train others on Thursday, May 26th at 7 p.m. at St. Timothy Parish Hall. Will you be there? Now please 
check off on your card and plan to attend and turn in your commitment card at the sign-up table as you leave. Finally, we have given a lot of love and respect to our former leaders, and we want to continue to remember them. On the reverse side of your page, you can write down on the reverse side the names of the living and deceased leaders who have and are making our community a better place to live in. Will you please also do that? Finally, remember Cops Metro. We have a question for you. Are you ready to commit yourselves to continue the timeless and demanding work of social justice for the common good of all our people? Are we ready to go to work? Yeah. Happy 40th anniversary. Que viva Cops Metro. Kelly Allen. I'm the pastor at University Presbyterian Church, and I want to thank Cops Metro for its long and tireless work for jo social justice and for teaching our community what that means. Our congregation is part of the expansion project called the San Antonio Sponsoring Committee. Thank you for all the leadership you are giving us. Let us join together in our closing prayer. God of mercy, compassion, and justice, we are here as grateful people for the strength of your liberating, liberating spirit which lit a fire in the heart and belly of Moses who brought liberation from Pharaoh's policies of oppression and dehumanization to his people. We thank you for the history of organizers who have heard the call to help communities show and honor the value of all citizens and non-citizens who live in our places of life, who have helped us to honor the dignity of work, and who have helped people find their place of voices and contribution to the community in which we live. We thank you for those who have gone before us, who have persisted in the work for justice by attending one more meeting, having one more conversation, giving one more dollar, coming up with one more strategy, making one more ask. Spirit of the living God, now fall afresh on us. Sharpen our minds that we might know our direction for the future. Help us to embolden, be bold in our action. Help us to listen to the voices around us. Help us use our voices to speak the truth of injustice and oppression. And may our eyes always be open to the realities and lives of our neighbors that we may know that we are all together in unity for the well-being of your entire creation. Amen. Thank you. I'd like to thank our public officials for participating in our action today. Thank you. And I want all of you, I want to thank all of you for coming today. Father Marty used to say at our parish, when you sign up for a Cops Metro event, you show up. All of you showed up today, and I thank you. We ask any leaders that are here today, I mean our leaders, and anyone that wants to participate in our evaluation to meet us about uh, 10 minutes after the event over in the briefing room. This concludes our meeting.
a quien Dios los ha mandado por la justicia luchar. Demos gracias al Señor, demos gracias, demos gracias al Señor, demos gracias al Señor, demos gracias, demos gracias al Señor. Por las mañanas las aves cantan, las alabanzas a Cristo salvador. Y tu hermano, ¿por qué no cantas las alabanzas a Cristo salvador? Demos gracias al Señor, demos gracias, demos gracias al Señor. Demos gracias al Señor, demos gracias, demos gracias al Señor. Y he decidido seguir a Cristo, he decidido seguir a Cristo, he decidido seguir a Cristo, sin retornar, sin retornar. La cruz delante y el mundo atrás, la cruz delante y el mundo atrás, la cruz delante y el mundo atrás, sin retornar, sin retornar. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Alabar al Señor, alabar al Señor, alabar al Señor, alabar al Señor, mano hacia adelante y luego hacia atrás. Le damos una sacudida y empezamos a saludar Mano hacia adelante y luego hacia atrás Le damos una sacudida y empezamos a saludar 